Welcome back to Ladies of Another View on Back, and we just switched seats here very quickly, and we have with us Lori Van Winkle from District 3 in Minot, and I met Lori at the press conference, and you're up against a lot of different things, and I said, well, come on on our show, we'll talk about it, but let's begin with talking about the fact that you are a realtor, and you've decided to go into politics. Why is that? Well, I decided when COVID hit and our freedoms and liberties were starting to be taken away from us that I couldn't stay silent any longer. So I got uh, fired up and I got involved and started to come down to the Capitol and, and was involved in the last legislative session and started to learn the process and, and get my voice heard on writing on some of the bills that were presented and the rest is history now and here I am. <laughs> Here you are, but how hard is it to be here? Things are getting a little tight two weeks before the primary, right? Yes, they are. Um, we're up against some, some government money. Um, and as people that decided that we would run um, for the people, by the people, we were going to raise our money um, ourselves. And so with the limited funds that we have to run our campaigns, um, here we are at the end running out of money when Governor Burgum's PACs and and the others are chipping in to, to start kicking in information against us. So if there are folks that say, uh, I couldn't run this time, uh, my hands are full, or the kids are this or that, and they want to support somebody in your area, how do they go about doing that? Uh, well, we do have a district website, and they can go directly to that website for um, the legislative candidates for District 3, and they can donate from there. Um, otherwise, they can... And we have it up at the bottom of the screen, pretty easy to remember, district3nd.com. Yes. And you can learn about Lori and... Yep, and Jeff and Bob. Jeff, yep, Hoverson. So um, you're the endorsed candidates. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yay. But you have to worry now because all of a sudden the unendorsed candidates have money behind them. Correct. And, and not only that, but what I see happening here is a dishonoring of the people because... The whole reason we have an endorsement convention is for the voice of the people to be upheld, you would think, right? Exactly. And so before we had our vote, we stood up there, all three of the candidates, before we gave our speech, or after we gave our speeches and asked the question, answered questions, you know, would we run if we were not the endorsed candidates? And Jeff and I said, no, we would not, because we wanted to respect the, the vote of the people. And our opponent said, yes, he would. Actually, I think he said that's not a yes or no question and then uh, said that he would. And then secondly, we were asked if we did get the endorsement, would we use the governor's money or would we accept PAC money or anything tied to the governor? And we answered no, Jeff and I. And our, our opponent said, well, why wouldn't he? He's a Republican. Mm. Well, we know where that comes from now. But. Right. <laughs> And so, you know, we, we wanted to honor the people, but after it was all said and done, we became the endorsed candidates, and he runs anyway. And now we're up against the fact that big money can buy a lot, and here we are stuck with very little. And it begins to look like it's, it's a voice being taken away from the people. And my question is, are we, are we going to be okay with this not being a government of the people, by the people, for the people? Are we okay with this becoming a government of the government, government by the government, for the government? That to me is a question yeah, of the day. Yeah, very, very good question because money starts to take away the voice. Because yes. if you can only hear the one, you know, money speaks, right? Well, money talks, people, people tend to be loyal to the dollar. Yeah. And the dollar that we were trying to be loyal to was of the people. And, okay, and we have a soundbite too, speaking of that. He is undermining the process of our representative government, in most cases, by executing a plan to defeat the very candidates who were endorsed by their districts. Everyday conservative North Dakotans used their time and money to support candidates and rally them to endorsement victories, only to have Governor Burgum swoop in with his millions of dollars to undo what they accomplished. He is the de facto head of the state Republican Party, yet his actions are damaging the Republican Party as a whole, and in particular, diminish the efforts of local grassroots Republicans. So then how about, you know, how this has affected all of us through history? Well, the, the King of England, 
basically was buying the parliament. And so the Revolutionary War began because of the, the American colonists were not okay with their voices being taken away from them. And so they revolted. And frankly, in like manner, we are entitled to do the same because he's taking away the people's voices. He has taken away you know, your rights and your constitutional liberties and freedoms and overstepping his boundaries. It's appalling that we have to fight within our party, although we already have endorsed candidates and we can't, and the other party. I mean, it just, it's division. It is division. And I mean, what is the motto? United we stand, divided we fall. So if our so-called Republican governor is against his own people, how is that united? I mean, those are just the questions that I run through my head. How are we, how are we united when he's dividing us? He's dividing the people's voice. And, you know, I get it. I, I get it when he's saying, well, it's free speech. And he's got the means, and we all want our candidates to get in. But, I mean, I think North Dakotans are more grassroots type of people where you want to hear the voice of the people. And if at the end, right before the primary or at the end of your campaign, all of a sudden the other side has a ton of money that they can use to get their voice much louder than yours, then, and I know it's politics, I know it's, it, it, it is the money, you know, but it, but, Money doesn't always win out because this happened in the last election cycle too, right? And yeah. Burgum's favorite candidates didn't all make it into office, right? Let's just say, let's just, I don't know, to me, I, I wanted to see what would the implications be if this worked for him. Right now, there are 47 districts, I believe. So we have odd numbers up for re-election right now. So that would be 24 districts, right? And he's dabbling in 13 to 14 districts. If he succeeds at just getting one of those, doesn't it look like he wins one half of one half of the legislative body? And in two years, couldn't he do this again with the uh, other numbered districts and gain 13 to 14 positions and get another one half of one half? So in four years, could he not own one half of the entire legislative session in his favor? And there's my question again, is that a legislative body of the people, by the people, for the people? Or at that point, has it become a, legislat a legislative body bought by the governor for his agenda? And that's, that's kind of frightening, but, you know, ray of hope. I remember um, when Representative Jeff Magrum visited us here, he explained that he was outspent 10 to 1 um, the last time that he ran, and there was like 300,000 put against him by the governor's PAC and others um, and you know he's maybe spent 30 and so he still won and there's still hope yeah but it takes people getting Amen. to the polls Grassroots, and voting all the way. for their people so you find out who represents what you love and you go out and vote for them because that's going to speak louder than any PAC dollars and you know that's what I that's North Dakota isn't like a lot of other states and I'm not from here originally, but I've been here for 32 years, so, you know, this is... That's home. Yep, it's definitely home. Um, but we like the small towns. The reason we do the My Hometown Show is because we really feel like the small towns of North Dakota are the backbone of the state. We don't get yes. eaten up by the big cities. Yeah, big cities have influence to a certain extent, but people know their people. Yes. They they yeah. know their fellow townsmen and they stand up and they come out and they vote, right? Yes. And I, and I think uh, I think half the reason why their platform is uh, a house of lies is because they don't really actually stand for anything and we're a major threat to them, and yeah. I and I think Amen. that should be evident by their tactics.